I don't have anything against things that are practical, you know, vehicles that are practical and well-engineered and reliable and tend to be a little bit boring. You know, I got nothing against the BMW airheads. Like, you know, I don't want to build a R65 slash my wrists. I like to build something different. So, I met this guy who introduced me to this guy that designed that guy's bike and then we started talking and he's about as nutty as a fucking squirrel turd. And you, you might have seen Mammoth's render that he's already done. Um, I think it's cool. We're going to tweak the render a little bit. We're not making it exactly the same as that. Now, this is totally impractical, although when you think about it, it can be practical. It's an old Harley, which I like, the torque, the four speed, so kind of in between here is 20th century, here's 21st century. So it's kind of bookended with some technology. So anyway, that's what this is going to be. Now we're rolling, so we'll keep doing some videos. So, started doing the body work. I'm laying out the cardboard forms for the tank. I decided I'm going to do the whole side, see everything out of one piece each side. It's a little kitty wampus, so I might have to I can give this a bit of a biff with the fucking body hammer. Obviously, I got some tweaking to do. Got the tank going right around the engine there. This nice line here, which I make a nice crisp line. This will get folded under there. Beat the fuck out of it with a hammer, it'll fucking go under. The seat here is gonna be for skinny little buggers like me, not for big fat bastards. You know, it's still gonna be a tight fit, so I'm probably gonna put a junk bucket down here. I don't know if I'll put a left hand junk bucket or a right hand. I might just do an ambidextrous junk bucket and be done with it. it might be crazy. Someone once said I was mad as a meat ant. Not sure how to take that. By the way, it's Mr. Meat Ant. Just sidetracking a little bit from the body work. Um, we'll get back into that. I need to sidetrack a little bit. And cramming a lot of fucking shit. It's like 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bucket here. Just to make things more of a challenge. Well, it's not really. So I'm going to put this magneto on here. But then I was thinking, I have this little root style blower. I bet you I could sneak this in here, this up here, and a big SU on the front of this little blower. I think I could machine a hole through there to put a drive pulley out the side of the magneto. I bet you I could cram this little fucking blower in there. It turns the right direction, even though this is a reversible. Hmm. Why the fuck not? I shouldn't be so premature about blowing this. Maybe blown and premature, not two words you should use together. So, as we know, I decided to go monocoque. That's one cock. Uh, one piece on the tank and the seat, which is, this is where it's going to be a little tricky. Got a world of petition in here, and here, obviously, keep get the gas in and the oil in and keep them separate. Anyway, I've got to get to the point where I've got a video chat with Mehmet because he wants to start designing this and I want to show him what I've got so we can work this shit out. And I've shaped this around the suspension. So we're going to put the seat in here. As we know, you know I've shaped this piece in here. What I'm going to do, and I haven't done this in years, is I'm going to gas weld all of the bodywork together. Fuck it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I went and got myself some gas flux and got the correct lens. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go back in time. I'm going to do some aluminum gas welding again. I love doing the body work, but I'm, I can't stop thinking about putting a fucking blower on this. What I've done, um, as usual, try to make things as hard as I possibly can for myself. I don't really, it just ends up that way. Being dry sump, got to run an oil tank. Since we know this is going to be the oil tank, I've got my stuff in here. I want to keep it mechanical looking. I'm going, to run a, I'm going to run banjo fittings. I made some nice stainless banjo bolts. I'm going to run that. That'll be inside there to look flush. It'll look fucking lovely. I kind of like the mechanical look. This is going to be sunk in top. My filler. Then, obviously, with a hull, you've got to return and crankcase ventilation. So we'll get them done. The tricky part is I hammered these up. It's my power hammer. It's a fucking wonky shape. Got to do what you got to do. I'm gonna fit that in there, dead nuts. I get a seal in here from the suspension I'm working around. Look, look here, see the suspension? It's going around there. This will be the bulkhead back of the seat. Keep all the fucking oil back in there. This will be nice in winter, this hot oil on your bum. Oh, it'll feel lovely. So, 
Sunday, Midwestern winter. Bit of fucking trouble getting to work today, but it's a good time. It's cold. Stay inside. Get some work done. You know, it's nice. It's a little bit fucking dodgy outside there, I tell you. <clears throat> so next weekend, uh, on Friday, I'll be at the Chicago IMS with uh, uh, the Guzzy V9. And then on Saturday, I'll be at uh, the One Show in Portland, which should be fun, doing a behind the build thing moderated by Miguel Gallucci. But I'm looking forward to meeting him, finally. And of course, Mark Atkinson's part of it, which should be, that's always interesting. And Hugo Eccles, so that should be fun, Englishman and Australian together. And uh, also Alex Earl, who I've looked at, he's, this guy does some good work. So we're doing this behind the build thing for Rabbit Rizoma. If you're at the One Show next weekend, check that out. It should be fucking good. I'll make a complete fool out of myself. Where's my hand? Where's my hand? I might because the bag is not here. I was hoping to look at it, you know. I was hoping, I said, yeah, we are going to Portland to what? Greg's back. Chicago. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go to Chicago. I don't blame you. I don't want to go back to Chicago. It's too cold. No. So I think, I think it's. I've seen pictures, so don't don't ask me until yeah. I don't see the good thing. That's, but yeah, for yeah. what I see, it's okay. It's looking okay, especially with that turbo. I think the right that's gonna be quite a thing. So I can't do show. Yeah, the handle. That's that's gonna be the day. So yeah, looking forward you know, to it. Yeah, I'm huh? looking forward to your <laughs> criticism. Oh yeah. No, let's go for a ride. Oh, yeah, like, let's oh, go yeah. for a ride. No criticism. Let's go for a ride. <laughs> that sounds good because that turbo could be. And quite, quite I got to any idea of how, how much horsepower you have? I think by the time we die, I think it'll be close to 70, maybe a little over 70. It'll be fun. Yeah, definitely. HPS bike, other side of the pond. Nice job, Giles. Fifan! I think that's Swedish for something. I don't know what it's for. Individually wrapped. I like the nipples. Oh, just what I wanted for Christmas is what I asked Santa for. ISR. I don't know what that stands for. I was trying to think of something funny to say what that stood for. Giles, not so heavy on the tape next time. <laughs> Smells like Swedish meatballs. Normally you get this stuff, it's anodized, their colors, and uh, it's cool because I could order it in raw aluminum, and so I can polish it and put it together. This stuff's way too nice, probably too nice for the likes of me. This is the ISR master cylinder and clutch lever for the Harley Ducati. This is some high-tech stuff. Um, I think they use these master cylinders and clutch levers on the space shuttle. Before I go any further with the metal work, because this fairing here, I don't know if you saw the render, this is going to encapsulate the front end somewhat, and we'll have reliefs here, little screen here. We'll do it soon, you'll see what I mean. What I've done, I've finished up the frame, got that tied in, had to readjust these front legs, tied, triangulate it nicely. So it's got some so it's solid. I'll never fucking kickstart this thing with a supercharger on it. I mean, I'm not a big guy, and supercharger, you gotta spin everything over. So I've mounted a little electric start here. Is someone trying to shoot me? There's a laser on me. Like, so I got this little gear reduction, I think it's out of a Toyota, which just having a Toyota part on there increases my reliability of the motorcycle a thousand percent. Now I've got to put this thing. A few people have asked me what's the difference between a supercharger and a turbocharger. Well, this one's super. This charges super in, like, supercharger, a lot of you know. So we're going to run that there, and we're going to run the SU. Get that short tucked in there. But as you can see, we're starting to get crammed for room in here. So we'll get the SU in there. Drive system off here. I'm going to overdrive it a little bit. And we're going to run an intake plenum around here. <laughs> I get skinny arms. So I'm going to run a plenum over here into this side. And hopefully that'll work. So I got the ISR stuff on here. The reason I've got these mounted up, which is lovely. I stole this off the space shuttle. I did, really. It's got NASA. No, it doesn't. Um, so wait, I want to get these off because the way the fairing is going to go is just going to be two slots for the handlebars to turn like that. So I've got to get all that mounted. So we get really close to doing the fairing, which it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm really looking forward to doing that. It's going to change the whole thing. So this week got quite a bit done so we can charge some super into the motor. Look, 
Let's have a look. We've got this, obviously this belt will be tight and we'll run off here to run this. Suck it in here. Got my plumbing going all the way around there. Nice volume for my planum. So I've got everything, got the starter about where I want it. So what I want to do now is the fairing. This is the start of the fairing. I decided I'm going to make this in, for the most part, three pieces, two sides, because we're just going to have slots here for the handlebars to come out. This is going to go around, we're going to have a little screen. People often ask me, it's 3003H14, 80 thou thick. That's what I use. But first, see, now it's, ah, now it's hard. Before you anneal it, because it distorts things, put a little bit of the shape in it where you're going, so when you anneal it, it will hold its shape a little better. So first, you get some soot on there, make it all sooty. And he's gonna heat it till the soot burns off. It's like a gauge, it gets it about 700 degrees, which will bring it, make it anneal. Hot. Once you start getting the heat in there, it'll burn off quick. You just gotta get the book. Keep it moving though. If you stay still, you'll melt the stuff. You end up with liquid. There we go. You can hear it too. Listen. It has that, that sound. See, it doesn't have that ring now that it's dead soft. What I want is like a nose cone on the front here. It's going to go around. What I usually do, I cut everything bigger because number of reasons I cut things bigger for the wheel. You know, if you've got nothing left to hang on to, uh, so you just leave a little bit and then you can trim that off towards the end. See, pinch point. Never caught my fingers in there. Actually, I like it like that. I say we just bolt it on that way. So I got these mallets in this shot bag. Joe, love these mallets, love this shot bag. Then, it's coming along. It takes a bit of work. Needs some patience. We're starting to get a bit of crown there. I'm going to hammer and dolly these edges around a bit. I just want to start getting this in. You know, work this by hand, bring it in. Then we'll start cutting out some notches for the fork legs so they can turn the obvious stuff like that. You don't need to go to the gym if you do this. This is a way. Okay, you have to stretch a bit more in the center. I think that's good enough. I say we just polish it a little bit with some never dull and chuck it on the bike. Starting to get some stuff there. I'm doing stretching. I get this thing, I don't like shrinking, like mechanically shrinking. We're getting some crown. It takes a bit of work. That's why it's satisfying. I'm gonna start trimming some of the excess off because the excess metal is just trying to hold me back from stretching everything else. But I might re anneal. I want a little bit more crown in the front there. And then we'll start, I'll hammer and dolly these edges around. I want a nice curve around the front there. Notch it out for the forks. Bob's your uncle. Okay, so the other day, I finished pounding this out. This is gonna be in front of my fairing here. And, and what I want, to, this is gonna mount off the front here. And I'm gonna put these holes because the fairing, this is gonna be really unique. It goes back into here. It's gonna have this little screen in there when I chop that down. The other cool thing about it, this, be like, this will be formed down into the sides of the fairings with the slots around here. This will be trimmed down with a little screen, set little slots there. It's gonna be unique, it's gonna be cool. I need to finish the monocoque seat and oil tank and everything. But so far I've got this up the front here. I'm gonna run the original steering dampener, so I've got this relief in here. This is actually going to be underneath the fairing, but I want the steering dampener. This gas tank. Made a, got a matching filler, which is going to go about here. Matches the one that I've made up for the back there. Pretty much got this side finished. This is really close. Um, 
the mounts done. I've got my clearance for the supercharger and everything. I'm going to do a few little things up the front here. I'm going to hammer, I'll just hand hammer a little relief into here so it clears the triple tree for the steering dampener. I've made these bungs up. You said this oil filler, which is the seat in the back. And this is my crankcase breather line and my return oil line. I'll be cutting these down. These are going to have hard lines that run on the outside. Then, this goes underneath. This is the bung I made up for the feed line. That fits in there. That'll be welded, obviously, so the oil doesn't run out. And this fits nicely around the suspension at the back. So I'll weld that in. I'll get a little straighter, weld that in. It's going to be good. We're going to have a seat. I've got the battery under here because I'm going to have the electric start. It's going to flip up for access to the battery and some electrical stuff in there. The one thing that's tricky, though, is I want to run a tail light here, but this is going to be full of oil. Aha. This is my housing for a nice, bright LED light. And then I've welded it to this piece of... Uh, 5 8 aluminum tube. So I'll weld that in there, and then I'll have this tube running through, coming through this bulkhead in the tank, I can run my wires in. So I can have a nice recessed, fringed, whatever you want to call it, LED taillight in the back here, even though it's full of oil. I guess it's an oil-cooled taillight. So yeah, I'm going to cut a hole. This will be recessed. This pipe, obviously, will be inside the tank. Come through, we can run the wires. I think it's going to look really nice. Tits. At the moment, I've just got small slots for the handlebars. Uh, you know, I'm going to enlarge them and, and you know, put a little bit more shape into them for the lever and the clutch cable's got to go through. But I found from experience, don't you don't want a big hole right away. It's like get all the work done, do everything, then make a bigger hole. So this is half a hole at the moment. My shop's kind of a hole. my banjo fittings for the oil. This is the return one. It's going to look nice with the exposed hard lines. So I've still got a lot to do. Um, and, you know, the, the idea is, you know, I'm pushing to get this finished because I, I want to take it to the hand-built show if I end up getting invited. Um, I know a lot of my friends have been invited. I haven't been invited yet, but, you know, I don't know maybe I will. I'm going to finish it by then anyway. Maybe I'll just go on gate crash. So, I work pretty quick, just on Sundays. It's my day off, so I can work as fast as I want, or as slow as I want, and whatever, it's Sunday. So, got a bit more done here. I got this, I've still got to put the bottom in the tank, which I've made, um, but I wanted to get it polished before I weld in, because I can't get access to the tank to straighten out anything. But I get it pretty straight. We start doing this here. I started working on the fairing, which the fairing's kind of unique. These holes, they're gonna be bigger, I'm just, what I'll do when I get into position, I'll start making these bigger. I've got to run clutch cable through there. Same on the other side, obviously. You have a nice recessed headlight there. Um, headlight's pretty cool. Got one from uh, Purpose Built Moto. Some fellow Australians made, gave me some nice little bits and pieces to use on here, which I'm looking forward to. So, gonna make a nice little framework for this screen. Um, I'm going with some goldish accents here. So I've got this formed, like I said, we'll weld in here and I'll obviously get rid of the welds there. Then I'm gonna make this cowl on the front, which will tie around here. I've got this nice radius tied into the, the tire. Put a little bit of shape in this thing. I'm not just gonna leave it flat. And you know what I think I might do with this? I might polish everything. Why not? Not polish everything, polish everything. So got some got I'm gonna polish. So I might do a little bit of finished stuff around here so it blends into the tank nicer. And like I said, with the gas filler in here, it should look breasts. Clean up my act, I'm trying not to swear so much. The other thing down here with the supercharger, you know, because a pulley's gonna be here, so I'm gonna make a nice little cowl cover there, then one over here for this. So, but I wanna keep the mechanicalness of it exposed. I'm like, yeah, exposed stuff. I like exposed mechanicalness. My banjo fittings for the oil. This is the return one. 
It's going to look nice with the exposed hard lines. Had this drill press a long time. This is, um, I think this is the year it was made here. 150, I'm not sure if that's 150 AD or 150 BC. Around about the same time though, that's when this was made. I think they used this. It was left over after they made the pyramids, I think. I got a bit of the metalwork done, and to be honest with you, I'm fucking sick of doing metalwork, so I always try and find some diversion. It's, it's other stuff I have to do, but I need diversion, do something other than the metalwork. So what I think we're gonna do, I'm gonna weld this in. The oil tank, as we know, is gonna go here. So I'm gonna make some hard lines. Here, I've welded these bungs in. This is my return for the oil. This is my crankcase breather pressure. And then in the bottom here is the feed for the oil pump. So what I did, I took some banjo fittings, drilled them out so they flow good, um, because I want to get a lot of oil in there. I've drilled it out to 3 8 here. Instead of some generic shit banjo bolts, I took some stainless bolts, like this, I machined the top, put a nice groove in it, drilled the center out, got a nice flow through there, make my own banjo box. So this is gonna go here. Then I'm gonna run plastic line off here. No, I'm not gonna run plastic line. Rubber, no, not rubber. This is what I'm gonna do. This copper nickel line, which polishes up real nice. It's polish up real nice. So I've got a little relief filed in here. I'm relieved I filed this relief in here and here. So the banjo fitting will sit right there. Then this will come around here. The two lines will follow here. Meet up with this one here. Then all three of them will go down here to the oil pump and the crankcase. Now I'm going to silver solder this together. So silver solder is going to be better than regular solder because it's got more tensile strength and should hold together. So I'm going to tin the end here. I use soldering flux for eye drops. And, uh, give this up the temperature. Don't try that at home. It burns. It burns like fuck. And it's fitting in there. We'll get this up to temperature. Let that cool down a bit. And then I'll clean this up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to nickel plate the end on there. I'll just put in the nickel tank. Just do the end and we'll polish up this copper nickel. This is this one. Obviously, I'm going to put copper washes in there so it seals, but then I'll form this around here. It'll follow down, like I said, meet up with the supply one and then work it down to the pump. I'm going to put an oil filter in line, obviously, and maybe even run an oil cooler up the front. But I'll run it all with this. This should look nice, tie in with the gold accents, and that's going to be my oil lines. I haven't got any good one liners for that, though. Maybe next time. A lot of the metal work's done now. It's you know, finish sanding, I've got it closed. Finish sanding here, obviously. Then I think I'm gonna polish everything for something different. I know this is kind of a unique fairy. Kind of looks like a, an Australian fertility mask, but I already got a bunch of kids that I love. Um, maybe I need an infertility mask. There's a lot going on on this side, but I want to make the other side kind of interesting. That was quick. What I did I like to keep the mechanical aspects of the, a lot of exposed. I just like that sort of shit. So I did my uh, oil lines as I showed you the other day, making up these hard lines here. Well, I finally got bottom of the oil tank welded in. That was a little challenge. So I had to put a welded bulkhead here, and you know, here it was tricky. I uh, getting these welded on the inside without warping this. These will all polish up a little more once this is polished, brushed here. I think it's going to look lovely. So I'm really close to getting this done where I can take it apart and polish it. And uh, it's about four weeks at the handbill show. Um, didn't get my invite yet, but that's probably the postal service. I really want to go. I mean, it's not just being invited, it's just a cool show. I mean, Austin's great. I'd probably live in Austin if I was uh, allowed to live outside the state and I'm on house arrest for taking the tags off my mattresses. Um, be good to see Andy talk about banging metal around with Andy and James Dio. Then I can always talk about quantum physics with uh, Stefan. I'll have no idea what I'm talking about, but Stefan will. So I got most of the metal work finished. Um, gonna make the screen. But one thing I was looking at here, where you're sitting, um, this is the belt for the supercharger, which is, you know, it's a little close. You know, if I don't put a cover on there and that belt breaks, that thing will come whipping off there, hit you right in the orchestra stalls. That's gonna, that'd sting. 
probably even leave a welt. <laughs> Last thing you want is a welt on your sack. A lot of the metal work's done now. It's you know, finished sanding, I've got it closed. Finished sanding here, obviously. Then I think I'm gonna polish everything for something different. I know this is kind of a unique fairy. Kind of looks like a, an Australian fertility mask, but I already got a bunch of kids that I love. Um, maybe I need an infertility mask. There's a lot going on on this side, but I want to make the other side kind of interesting. That was quick. What I did, I like to keep the mechanical aspects of a lot of exposed. I just like that sort of shit. So I did my uh, oil lines as I showed you the other day, making up these hard lines here. Well, I finally got bottom of the oil tank welded in. That was a little challenge. They had to put a welded bulkhead here and you know, here, it was tricky. I, I, getting these welded on the inside without warping this. These will all polish up a little more. Once this is polished, brushed here, I think it's gonna look lovely.